go over how to create something like this in Fusion. So, as in the presentation, I explained that with something like this, you might need to use the sculpt environment rather than something like T splines because by using T splines, you have to define parameters and create sketches on the correct planes and things like that. It's quite a tedious process, although that is the better way to do it um, for manufacturing and things like that because it's more accurate. Using the sculpt environment will really help to speed up the process. So the sculpt environment is, you've got to imagine it as being like a digital version of the workshop with uh, blue form or clay or something like that. It's not super accurate, although it can be, but it's not as accurate as T-splines or extrusions or anything. But it does allow you to quickly create stuff like this with nice sweeping curves that all work together. So what we'll do um, is I'll start a new document. So first of all, when we're creating stuff from a sketch in Fusion, we need to add the sketch to a plane to use that as our reference. So if we go to Insert Canvas, find the image or sketch that you've got. And then you need to select a plane. So because I've drawn it from the side view, we need to select one of the side planes, either one. Now it's quite small, so I'll just use the scale button to make it bigger. And that'll do. So now what we need to do is edit it a little bit. So if we go over to canvases, right click on the coffee cup canvas and hit calibrate. Now what we can do is we can define how big this is because this is an infinite canvas. This could be 100 meters wide or 10 centimeters wide. Fusion doesn't know that, so we need to tell it. So if we click on the corner, there and there, we know that in real life this is approximately 80 millimeters wide. So if we do that, the sketch will scale up so that this is 80 millimeters wide, and obviously everything else will scale proportionally. Now, when you get further along in the project, you should be really referencing ergonomics books to get the ergonomics and proportions of everything right, you know, the height of this and the, how far this comes out. But for now, we're just going to, I'll show you how to quickly make it. So now that we've got this, we need to hit there again and then click M on the keyboard for move. Why is that not working? Okay, if that doesn't work, just click Edit Canvas. Now what we need to do is we need to bring this up so that the bottom of the cup is roughly aligned with this red line, which is the bottom plane. And then we need to move it left and right so that this, the origin here, is roughly in the center of the cup and you'll see why in a second so now that that's done we'll hit ok and now you can see that imagine this was our ground and um, this would be sat on the table so if we go into the sculpt environment by hitting the purple cube here uh, what we'll do is because it's a cylindrical object we'll create a cylinder nice and easy so we'll select the bottom plane and now you've got a crosshair, so that's going to define the center of the circle. Now because we set this cup to be at the center of the origin, when we click and drag to set the diameter of the um, cup, it's perfectly aligned. So now we just click and drag up until it um, is 80 millimeters wide. Now we should have something like this. So obviously that's not what we want. So what we'll do is we'll just bring this up to about here for now and then don't worry about that. You can change the amount of sides, uh, faces and height faces but we'll leave that as it is for now because we're not going to deform it too much. So if we just hit OK, now what in the sculpt environment if you double tap with the left mouse button on any line you'll highlight that entire ring or connection of lines. So if I do that one it'll highlight that. Now this is useful because when we click this button, edit form, or you can do it before, and then double click there, what we can do is we can then move that entire ring as one unit. Now that is useful when you also hold the alt button and then move it, it creates another set of faces on top of that. Now that's useful because what we're going to do is we're going to create a couple more to match up to the height but we're going to leave this line here because we're going to use this and bring this out here. So if we just keep holding Alt and then drag a few more times, we want one there, 
and then one to be the top approximately. Well, that's fine. So if we double click on this line, zoom in a bit, and we can rotate that to be minus five degrees. Now that it's not a, it's not the same as this angle, but it's all right because it's a sketch. So we'll just tilt it a little bit and then just move it down slightly so you can see where this line is going to match there. And now we come off that. And now what we want to do is highlight these two lines here, just them two, and then hold uh, Option or Alt, and then drag it out again until it's about roughly the same kind of extrusion as the sketch. So now we should have something that looks like this. Now I know it's not great at the minute, but what we're going to do is we're going to use a tool within the environment called Crease. So if we hold control and then select them two lines again, we go to modify and then crease. We're going to crease them lines. So now that's looking a lot more like the sketch, but it's still not right. So if we uh, click edit form again, now if you click with the left mouse and drag to the right, you can select some lines. Whereas if I click and drag from the le uh, left, move to the click and drag from the right and move to the left, it selects the faces. Now because we just want the lines, we're going to click from the left and drag right and click on the edit form button again. Now what we can do is we can really tweak this and bring it back to where we need it to be. Now if, if something's not quite right or you want the curve to be more indented like it is here, you can move this uh, minus five like that. Um, oh. Double click there. Now we want this to be five. Yeah, that'll do. So now you can see we've still got a nice, clean, crisp, hard edge on this side. Obviously on the bottom and the top, but we've got this extrusion that is creased, and then that slowly and gently conforms to the shape of the cup by the other side. So that's exactly what we we're after. So now, if we're happy with that, you can see it's still an empty tube. We'll click finish form. And then now what we've got, if I turn the sketch uh, off, is a surface body. Now, for to edit this, we need to be in the surface environment. Now, a surface body has no physical de uh, thickness to it. Although it looks like it could be made out of paper or something right now, mathematically, it has no thickness. So we can only edit this within the surface environment. We need to turn that into something that's quite thick, because obviously cups are about 2 or 3 mil thick. With ceramic so we need to patch the bottom so if we go to the top left and click the patch tool this is going to fill that space of whatever space you click so if I was to patch the top you can see it's just going to patch that but we don't want to do that we just want to patch the bottom so now that we've got if we open my bodies you can see I've got the top I'll call it cup and then the bottom we've just got a uh, bottom these are two separate bodies. Now we need to merge these together uh, first of all. So if we select them both, then come over to the stitch tool. Anything with a green line will be stitched. Now obviously that's red because there's nothing to be patched to. There's nothing there. So that's fine. We're going to stitch them two together. So now you should see one body. Now we're nearly there. Um, obviously in real life cups do have a small fillet on the bottom. So we're going to add that in. Say about three mil. Obviously you can spend more time doing this and making variations. But So now what we have is a surface body that's enclosed on one end. So to turn that into a normal body that we can work with, we need to thicken it using this command here. So if we just click on the inside surface, um, we'll just say 2.3, 3mm, whatever. You can see that now we've got a thicker body, so if I just click OK, you can see we've got the original surface body. Now we've got a normal body, like a solid body that we can work with in this environment. So we can go back and then fill at these edges because obviously you would cut your lips if these were sharp. So we'll add a one mil fillet there. And then uh, the shortcut for fillet is F by the way. And then because it was 2.3, we're going to add uh, 1.2 there just to add a fillet on the inside. And there you have it. So now we have, I mean, I suppose you could have 
small for that layer. Point three, maybe. Yeah. Obviously, because in real life this would not be that sharp. It would have some fillet to it because it's made of ceramic. So there you have it. Now you've got this cup. Um, you can go back and then edit this form if you want to, and you know bring things out or make the base wider. But you can also copy and paste them, so you can make a lot of variations very quickly, which you can then potentially 3D print or um, print out and then use that to create more real life um, models with blue form or something. It's really up to you, but the same technique for this applies to a lot of other products like hair dryers or computer mice or something like that. So it's a really good way of creating nice looking objects quickly.